Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Adobe Live. My name is Sin Lagos. And also joining us today is Tim Philippus. Hi, Tim. Hey, <laughs> I'm a landscape and travel photographer. And also, as of lately, like a travel videographer based out of Frankfurt here in Germany, where I'm calling from right now. I know you're going to be doing some compositing today. So the first thing I'm going to show you right now is this image here and with this image i'm just gonna um, just like show you my basic workflow of what i'm doing in lightroom first of all in general i use lightroom for general adjustments on a photo like i don't use any like super fancy tools here i only use like um, gradient tools for example the basic color correction tools because everything else that I don't want to just globally like I do in Lightroom. We want to do later on in Photoshop because we have so much more control over that in Photoshop. So let's jump right into the edit. I just adjust the exposure a little bit so that my subject area is well exposed. I just use gradients to bring down the exposure in the sky. And I mm. nearly always do that. I always add like two different gradients, gradients on the top and on the um, bottom of the image and then add like a soft radial, radial gradient. Um, and this is all in order to guide your eye towards where I want the, the eye to look at. The three different steps of getting your light really soft. So the first would be sunrise or sunset, and then make sure the light comes in from either the left hand or the right hand side of like a 90 to 45 degree angle, I would say. The second would be what we're doing now in Lightroom, adding a radial gradient. And I do that with every single one of my photos, actually. And I just try to make sure it comes where the natural light source is coming from because the sun was rising from the left, right? Bring up the exposure here a little more. Then I'm going to bring up the temperature as well because light usually is warm or like the sunlight is a little warmer than uh, what we have here in the shade. Then um, really important one, bring down the clarity just a notch. And then also I want to decrease the blacks so we don't miss out on the nice contrasty area that we have here. I really, really like to globally bring up the whites until they are nearly burning out and then drop the shadows like the blacks until they are burning out just like a little bit. A really, really big tip that I'm that I can give you and that it's it's a no brainer, but also a game changer. You've been working on it for like three or four hours. Step away maybe sleep over it and then the next day I'll look at it again. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Sin? Photoshop? Should we move on to Photoshop and let's yeah, see what we I'm got excited. there? You need to see how important it is to have your vision right before. So we have this photo here of me standing here and then, um, yeah, nice light, even though it's like really harsh on that side still. Then we have the afterglow. Then we have another day of shooting where you can see the scene drastically changed. So what I would like to create is to get the best out of all of these photos and combine them into a photo okay. where I would have optimal conditions. So the first thing that we're going to do here, of course, like duplicate the background layer, but we want to get rid of like all these people here. I just use my polygon lasso tool to just detect all these people. And then I go to edit and then fill and then content aware fill. Oh, well, okay, that works quite magic. An easier one, you can always use the spot healing brush tool. Uh, he's rather small. So for example, yeah, that, that feels how a he's easier. got. What we are going to do now is bring it into four by five format, and then we start to recomposite a little bit. I would use the rectangular marquee tool, and then I would scale up these mountains from the ground and then press Command T and then tilt them up so they look a little bit more dramatic. So I personally don't have any issues widely enlarging that mountains because I know in reality they look bigger. Usually what I would do is just like fill this area here with the sky and then sky replacement. And then I would just insert one of my skies that I'm always using. Nice. And then also I would like to have a little bit more water in the scene basically and then let's see how it looks when we brush this scene here in and then also i just love to just like brush the water in 
Thanks everyone for being part of this session today and participating on the chat. Yeah, I think I, I really learned a lot myself. So thank you for showing us your entire workflow. It was so cool. I'm just like, okay, now I want to keep going. I want to keep educating.